How's it going, everyone? Matt Banacoro from Ask Audio here, and I'm going to be checking out Sample Logic's Cinemorphex with you today. Cinemorphex is a really cool virtual instrument that is more than just a collection of samples. There's an animation engine and a complexity and depth to everything you can do in Cinemorphix that is almost staggering. I'd like to just show you a couple of the presets and the way it works and some of the really cool features, some of the things that really stood out to me when I first started checking this instrument out. So to load up a preset in Cinemorphix, everything is encapsulated. You go to the preset browser right here in the middle of the screen. I've got some categories, some single core and multi-core instruments here. I'm going to stick with the multi-core ones, and we're going to talk about what those cores are in a second. So I've got one-note combos, which are these sort of one-note great film scoring or music generation and motion type sounds. So I'll pick Golden Eagle. Now, if you follow along with the articles I write, you know I am a big fan of instruments that save you time when you are composing music for film. That's my own personal thing. I do a lot of music for videos and I do a lot of video work. And this instrument and most of the instruments from Sample Logic really are geared towards that. The ability to write music quickly that can be used and configured and customized in the way you want. So it really, really saves you a lot of time. These one note combos are really, really interesting and they are completely configurable so you can play along with them and add your own layers to them. So I'll just play a few notes in this one note combo. So there's a lot more going on in here than just a loop. There's actual algorithmic data being generated and music in motion happening. And as you can hear, you can tonally shift as you're playing. So you can do it in a sequencer and record that, or you can just play it live. Now, each of these is a core right here. There are four cores that you have to work with, and every core has two sound source choices. We'll get into the sound sources in a minute, but if there's ever anything you don't like about the sound or you want to change about the sound, you can activate and deactivate the cores. So I've got this sound. Let's say that percussive element, the um, sort of crickety sound is a little bit too much for me. I can take that out and make it more of a wash. And now I can feel free to add my own percussive element to this sound if I want to. So I can activate or deactivate the cores like that to sort of tweak the sound. Um, and just by doing that, I've already got a different sound. So not even getting into the controls or anything like that, but just by activating and deactivating cores, you can kind of configure it to work in the way that you like. And again, it's a big time saver for me. If I have to build a film cue, um, sometimes I might have the percussion part already and I just want to grab everything else all in one note pretty neat. So let's say I do wind up using this percussive part. I have it. I haven't tracked my own percussion yet, but it's a little edgy for me. Well, that's okay. I can zoom into this core and make some edits to it by just clicking this button here. And so with this core now, I can see all the different things happening, the effects chain for that in particular core. And I can go to the EQ, this sort of macro knob controlling the depth and the amount that we're hearing the EQ. and pull some highs out of that core. Now, believe it or not, that expansion button you saw here exists under the EQ, and I can actually tailor the EQ to be what I need by expanding the EQ. So as you can see, you can jump further and further down the rabbit hole with every button click. You don't have to get into this stuff, but it's there if you want to. It's actually my favorite type of feature. I like to know that an instrument is powerful, but I also like to know that I don't have to dive into all this stuff if I don't want to. Sometimes I just need to build a quick cue and I don't want to get in and adjust the frequency sweep of one of the sound sources of one of the cores of the instrument that's supposed to be generating um, you know, quick cues for me. But it's, it's there and I can do it if I want to. So I can open up that one instrument, adjust the EQ and make those sort of percussive hits. Not quite so aggressive. So I'll close that up. Now, don't forget that effects engine is just for that core. You, of course, have a very robust effects engine down here at the bottom that you can activate and deactivate, reorder, um, map to an XY pad if you want to. So I can instantly turn the phaser on, adjust the depth of the phaser, make it a little more wet.
or turn it off. So you've got effects that will affect your entire sound and then effects that will affect just that single core. And you've got presets here that you can pick that will have different effect chains that you can go through and browse as you see fit. I'm going to open up another instrument here. So that's a sort of one note combo. It's like music in a, in a box for you. You know, it generates and it goes. And remember, it's using like step animation and different uh, sound core animations and loops to generate all at once. It's not just a single loop. So it's all configurable and customizable. Now, if I go to an instrumental, something that I might play a little bit more. So let's say I've got my film score going a little bit, but I want a little bit more of a hand in things. I want to use this more like an instrument and play it. That's okay. They've got me covered too. So I can scroll down a little bit and I don't know, I'm going to pick the brass choir. So I'll close that window. Well, that's really cool. I like to jump into and just take a look at these sound sources. So I'm going to look at core number two here and it has a sound source for the top one, Surreal Visions but there's no sound source for the bottom one. So I can click there and load up a sound source if I want to. I'll load up the Chordophone right here. And right here is a little sound source mixer. So if I want to hear more of that Chordophone, I can move it there and have that sound source be the entirely just the Chordophone. Now, of course, that makes the percussive element of my sound very, very loud. So I might make it a little bit less than half. Everything about Cinemorphics is so big when you're working with these multi-chord instruments. Now, in the center, if I want, I don't have to just mix between these two sound sources. I can mix between the cores as well. That's what this is for. So if I want to just do a straight mix, I can say, okay, I like everything, but a little too much of the percussive element. So I'm going to mix towards the other three. So I can hear this sort of uh, step animation thing going there more. Go up to here. Hear the tube and horn instruments. Hear the percussive element. Or hear the organ element. And here's the best part. That motion is recordable. I can hit the record button, play, move things around. And now that is saved as motion. As long as I have the play function activated, as I play now, it's going to play back my recorded motion. Makes it a little tricky when I'm using like a percussive sound and such drastic changes, but that's okay. It takes a little getting used to. I don't have to get used to it, though. I could load up one of their presets. So I've got some circle bars all around the world. Crisscross jump. Let's check out what that's about. Pretty drastic. It's uh, literally jumping from one to the next. We could try subtle center and just some small changes around the middle. So the mixer is recordable and animatable as well. I'm going to go to a third preset. I'm going to check out a loop this time. Let's see what they've got in the way of loops. I kind of like Game Addict. That's a fun one. So if I open up Game Addict now, let's take a listen to this loop first of all. It's more of a single note. Play it and it'll generate something for me. All right, cool. So I've got things going on there, but now I want to be able to use that little melodic element of things. And sometimes I want to be able to take it out, or sometimes I want to be able to just fade away from it a little. I could click on the mouse here and deactivate core four. And then when I want it back in, but that's a little clunky. I may not want to have my hands on the mouse while I'm recording. Totally okay. They've got a solution for me. I can activate mod wheel control and shift between the sound sources. 
We'll do that for a couple of them. And now by using the mod wheel, I'll actually be shifting between those different sound sources. Look at that. I can mix away from the melodic one at a flash or bring it out slowly. So that's something that's really cool. It's fully controllable. So this is a really fun instrument. It's diverse. There's so many different sounds in there and you've got as much control as you need, but you don't have to control anything you don't want to. That's one of the main things I like about Cinemorphix. I think they've really struck a decent balance of being able to have a lot of power at your fingertips, but a lot of the work done for you ahead of time. So I'm Matt Vettacore from Ask Audio. I hope you enjoyed checking out Cinemorphix with me. I certainly enjoyed using it. It's a great instrument, and I think that you can do quite a lot with it.